Hello, BookTube. It is a Saturday, and I thought I would do a tag. It's the wear a mask tag. Uh, I can't wear it, uh, a mask uh, properly. Um, I would have trouble breathing with it on sitting here. Uh, now, uh, when I move around, I huff and puff. Uh, it doesn't take much, and it's just not possible, so... As a result, I don't go out uh, really at all. I've only been out a few times to the bookshop and to the doctors. And it's sort of, I go directly there uh, in a taxi and they're aware that I can't wear a mask. Uh, it does, still doesn't stop people, like if I'm waiting for the taxi outside to say something, but they jump to a conclusion as people normally do without uh, uh, wondering or asking the question. But... Uh, even so, I will do this tag, and it's uh, to have three books that um, uh, that uh, uh, have uh, characters that wear masks. And the first one that I uh, they're all going to be French, uh, French novels, uh, and also I'm going to reference uh, silent films with it as well. Why not? Um, the first is Victor Hugo's 1968 novel, The Man Who Laughs. Uh, it's about a nobleman, uh, Gwynplaine, or Gwynplaine, um, who uh, the king uh, decides to slash his face uh, and on each side of his cheek, basically. So he's in a, a he has a permanent grin, um, and he's quite grotesque looking for most people and. Uh, it's it's set uh, in the 17th, 18th, 17th century, I think, late 8th, 17th century. Um, it's set in England, uh, as far as I can remember from the novel. Um, and he rescues a baby uh, in, in a storm, but he gets he, they both get sort of taken in by a um, a philosopher come uh, sort of showman. Uh, and uh, they make him as he grows up later he makes a living in freak shows carnivals and, and that type of thing where he'll wear a mask for a lower face uh, and then uh, people are, are uh, afraid and uh, of his grotesqueness they're great. he's grotesque and, and they laugh at him um, and it's it's he well he wears a mask to cover that up uh, without when he's not in in the show in the freak show but it also he's that is is a mask for how he is really inside people think he is grotesque uh, but he's not and uh, uh, he falls in love with uh, like this is later uh, he falls in love with the young woman as she grows up the the child uh, and they fall in love with each other she's blind um, so she can't actually see um, him but uh, she can feel his face and uh, it's been made into, uh, in I think in the first decade, uh, there was a French, um, maybe two French ones in the first couple decades that were made. I don't think they're, they've survived. Uh, Universal um, create, uh, did one in 1928, The Man of the Last, uh, directed by Paul uh, Lenny, and with... Conrad Veidt as Gwyn Payne and Mary Philbin as Dia, D, I think a Dia. Uh, they might have changed her name for the film. I can't remember now. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's uh, the first one basically. Uh, the next one we'll just continue in sort of order is uh, the Phantom, uh, Phantom of the Opera, by Gaston Leroux. Uh, it was written as a serial uh, in like 1909, 1910. I think it came out in book form in 1910. But uh, may have been that year that it was translated to English uh, or 1911, somewhere around then. Uh, it's, it's the story of, um, of, the, of the Phantom. He's, he's disfigured, uh, I think, by fire. Uh, he's, he wears a mask and he falls in love with. Uh, an opera singer it's yeah it's a long time since i've read it um i i do get it confused with the film which is it's not exactly the same but yeah so that's he wears the mask to cover up uh the uh um 
the disfigurement that he has. And uh, Mary Philbin is in the film, and that was done in 1925 by Universal as well. Um, Lon Chaney played the Phantom, and Mary Philbin pay, played the opera singer. Um, so, and then shortly after that, there was another novel, uh, the first of many, uh, called Phantomas. Uh, it was written by Maurice uh, Alain, 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 I'm not sure the pronunciation, and Pierre uh, Silvestri. It's, uh, he, do, he doesn't wear, like in the films, they always have him as a mask, and then I think in the, uh, in, in sort of the covers that were that were done at the time, but he never really wore a mask per se as, that I can remember. I've only read one of the novels, Phantom, the first one. And but he's a master of disguises. Nobody knows who he is. He can become anyone. And uh, it 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 was a sensation. It was written in 1911, I think it was. Uh, it was translated in 1915, possibly to English. But hot on the heels of it, within a couple of years, uh, there was a French serial made, uh, eventually, from 1913 to 14, five parts. Um, they were about an hour, an hour and a half each. Uh, uh, and the director, it was done by Louis Fiod, F Fiod, or Fiod. Again, the pronunciation is off there, I'm sure, because I've never, I've never actually heard anybody pronounce his name. Uh, but yeah, it's just basically, uh, all these crimes, uh, horrific crimes to even like, you know, just cat burglar type crimes. And they were, they were, they were hugely popular. The, the duo went, to, I think they wrote like 30 some, uh, novels or, or sequels to, to the first one. And then once, uh, Silvestri died, uh, the other author wrote about another dozen or so. So there's like 40 some or 50 of these novels. Um, so, and he, like his mask again is because nobody knows who he is. Uh, he's a master of disguise. Uh, and well, these are a long time ago since I read these. Uh, so I'm not, I, I'm not really going into huge plots because I can't remember the details of the plots because the film sort of, uh, blot out more because I've seen the films more recently than, uh, I read the books. Um, the other one that I wanted to have a uh, mention in, but it's not a novel, it's uh, Arthur Conan Doyle's uh, Sherlock Holmes story called The Man with the Crooked Lip, uh, where um, he's, he's a, I'm not sure if he's an accountant or a clerk uh, of some sort, um, and he, oh no, 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 he was writing, I think he was writing a story, yeah, he was, he was a journalist of some sort, um, one of the things, anyway, but he, he goes sort of undercover and he realizes that he can make more m money begging. So he winds up uh, spending uh, his time, you know, pretending to go to work. Uh, and he begs on the street selling matches and other things, and he makes more money doing that. Um, so I, I, that's one of my favorite uh, Sherlock Holmes stories, is anyway. Um, but yeah, um, so. Yeah, that didn't take too long. Uh, under 10 minutes uh, for a tag. Um, I'll upload it and see what you think of it. Um, and have a good evening, Book 2.